Yes, everybody. Yes, it's time again for your and my favorite podcast. This is Survival of the Fittest is the soup du jour. I'm Roberto Trevino. And let's talk about salt, pepper, love, time, effort, and the future. And I always love to talk about the future. But knowing the future, or at least trying to live the future and I mean, you're going to live the future if you're lucky, okay? But can't, do you have a future unless you understand your past? And today I was on, like, I would have to say, like, on a, a criollo culinary tour. And for those of you who don't know what criollo means, criollo in my kitchen and in my uh, sphere of knowledge is Puerto Rican food. And uh, I was all over the place today. And... Uh, I wa- we walked into one restaurant, and uh, I was just kind of like, "Oh, this is great! The smells, the recao. You know, you you can you can literally smell the beans brewing in the back, and all this wonderful stuff." And this guy comes up to me, and he just kind of stands at attention and gives me a salute, and I'm just like, uh, and I look at him, and I'm and he's just kind of like, "Chef," and I said, "Whoa." And I instantly recognized him, one of my old staff members from my time in Puerto Rico. And uh, I started to ask myself, you know, I, he said, no. And I said, you saluted me. What's up? You know, after a while, we got comfortable. We're chatting about different things. Where you been? Blah, blah, blah. You know the story. And he says, well, you know, you ran such a strict restaurant, such a strict kitchen at one point that I felt that that's how I needed to, to say hello to you was by giving you the salute first and then moving on. I said to myself, wow, was I really that much of a, maybe a jerk? Or maybe was I that strict? Was I that demanding? And I started to think about it. And I even kind of looked at him and said, yeah, that was another time. I was different. And I almost kind of, I don't want to say I was ashamed. By no means was I ashamed because there was some great moments in my, in our culinary past, my culinary past. And so, I kind of accepted it and said, you know what? This is a good sign. This is a good sign that you made that kind of impact of discipline. You know, that's something that I think that we don't see as often in the kitchens and restaurants anymore. And I wonder if if something is not right, you know, if something is, you know, just, uh, you know, is... is, is <laughs> Is it, is it fair to say that I was a jerk? No, because I wasn't. I was intense, all right? That, that's the right way to say it. And uh, is it fair to say that I'm no longer that way? And you know what? I have to say to myself, there's my moments. Because I'll be in the kitchen, super busy, and someone will come at me with one of those, like, sort of sideways, sort of front-of-the-house comments, and you kind of give them a look, and you kind of bark something at them, and then in a decent way, because... I really don't think that we're living in a time anymore where where you can tell somebody off, you know. <laughs> I think you can find yourself in legal troubles. But the fact is, I, I think that there needs to be that discipline again, you know. I, I, I see so many young people in the restaurant business now, and they're sort of almost playing while they're at work. And yes, they get the job done. And yes, when it's time to work, they work. But... There's a lot of, I don't want to say horseplay, but a lot of messing around going on. And I say, has it always been this way? And then I ask myself, you know what? There's probably no freer place than the kitchen where people talk shit, where people, you know, literally mess around. And so having realized that, I, I think over the years I've lightened up a lot. And let me repeat that. A lot. <laughs> I used to be, you know, rough. And that doesn't exist anymore. And, you know, and I told that employee, that, that ex-employee, that who did a great job tonight, by the way, in his restaurant, and he's a professional, and he just looks great. And you say to yourself, like, you know what? I hope that we had something to do with that. I hope that, that, that he is making good money, that he is still in the biz, although he was very young when he worked for me. He's still a young guy, but we're talking about maybe 10 years ago. So 
I think what's important is that we do realize that we've created great people in the industry. And there has been a fair amount of strict and a fair amount of messing around. So now I look at young restaurant employees messing around and I think it's acceptable. I think, you know, even though I want more discipline, I think if people are, you know, if they're able to kind of separate the moments when they're messing around and the moments when they're expected to kind of like get it done, you know, whether it be delivering food or cooking or cleaning tables or just attending to the guest properly, addressing the guest properly. I think all these things, we see them still in the restaurant business, you know, and there's a genuine, you know, one thing I will say about people in the restaurant business, there's a genuine desire to, to serve to, to treat well, to share ideas, to share stories and flavors. And I think that overall feeling is kind of a natural thing within the restaurant business. You know, there's always going to be that grumpy guy, that, that, that upset waitress that, you know, we're humans and, and life goes on. But the fact is that I think people in the restaurant business are nurturing and giving and loving. And I think that's what really separates, you know, a regular dining experience and a spectacular dining experience because the professionalism is expected. You know, uh, that that moment when the server is just totally in tune with you and taking your order and understanding your needs and your, you know, what you want at that moment, I think that, that there's something very special about that. And, you know, I go on and I, I, I can go on all day about how I, much I love restaurants and the restaurant business and, and dealing with everyone in the biz, whether they be the, the front of the house or the back of the house. And these are the things that I really believe as an older chef I've learned to appreciate. At one point in history, I believe that everything came out of the kitchen. Everything came from the chef's mind. And the only reason why this is successful is because I'm involved. Yeah, that sounds crazy and, uh, and narcissist. And cr- yeah, definitely, all of the above. But the fact is, you know, over time, you really do learn to appreciate every side of the restaurant. And, you know, you see it in the older, more successful restaurateurs as well. Where, where maybe they came from the kitchen, maybe they came from the front of the house, but they, in the end, truly understand every single, like, crack, hole, uh, you know, a piece of metal, broken this, broken that, everything in the restaurant. They know it like the back of their hand, and that is not a bad thing. That is when you've mastered something. And I think in the end in life, we're just trying to master things. Whether you mastered how to make your grandma's, you know, oatmeal cookies, or you mastered, you know, how you like to mow your lawn. You know, (laughs) there's people. And my dad was victim. You know, he had his system, and you had to follow his system if you were going to mow the lawn. So mastering things. I think is kind of in our nature as humans as we get older and as we do get better at our craft or at whatever we're doing, I think mastering it is when you truly can look back and understand your mistakes, understand what not to do. And we've talked about this in the past. We've talked about how many years you need to be in the restaurant to not meter la pata. Okay, that means like... Like, literally put your foot in your mouth, you know. So, it was nice to see. It was great to see. And, in fact, not only one person from my past, the twin brother of an another ex-employee was working at this restaurant. So, when this one waiter starts telling him, no, 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 this is fulano, Trevino, Trevino, he worked in this, he did that. The, the twin brother of my ex-employee looked at him and says, I mean, I'm talking to completely different people. He says, Oh, that's Trevino? My brother used to work with him. And he instantly came over and, and just brought that, that charm, that natural, wonderful restaurant vibe, you know, where, Oye, tu trabajaste con mi hermano. Do I look familiar to you? And I said, you do. And he goes, because he's my twin. And I just got a kick out of that. So very cool. 
great afternoon of dining, a great afternoon of, of, of reminiscing of old restaurant uh, sort of uh, antics and <laughs> adventures that we've had with different employees. And uh, it's always nice to see these things. You know, it's very nice to see this. Uh, I've been on, a, on, a, on, a, on another like trend lately on chewy food. I like chewy food, like chewy noodles, mochi, mochi uh, boba tea. All these things that are like kind of foreign to our palate. And so lately I've been just sort of wanting to just eat a bunch of chewy things. And so I did a little research and I realized not only do I like chewy things, but it's one of the top trends of food in 2022. And that is amazing to me because it was, I thought it was kind of a thing with me, you know, and I would fill my mouth up with a bunch of rice noodles and then start chewing because I wanted that effect, you know, and if you are a, a noodle person, you know that that mouthful and that, that, that sort of that sort of texture is what really kind of is most the love. And, and it's different from pasta because pasta you can eat and it indeed is kind of a noodle, right? I mean, ultimately, but Asian rice noodles have a different texture. Mochi is a rice product as well made with rice starch or maybe it was tapioca starch. I'm not sure. It's one of the other. But tapioca, you know, pearls or the boba tea is another amazing thing. All these things coming from cassava or yuca which again is one of my favorite root vegetables and one of the things that that Puerto Rico does super well that's yuca yuca al mojo yuca and escabeche love it all right but going back to chewy foods that has just been my thing lately and I was blown away that I when I read that it was indeed a food trend for 2022 and so I started to ask myself what are the other trends and my sister and I last week were talking about starting a uh, uh, maybe some kind of online chili business, like Mexican chili business, you know? And she said, oh, you know what I like, Bobby? She says, I like salsa matcha. And I went, salsa matcha? And it is an oil-based dried chili, not paste, but certainly like salsa, but oil-based, and very similar to like Chinese, you know, like, fire oil or or chinese you know just the, the the chinese red peppers and oil very similar to that but very mexican in flavor because of the different spices there it's it's, it's it comes from veracruz mexico but it's wonderful and again i was like oh yeah i love that idea susie we could figure it out we could do it you know and then i realized once again one of the top trends of 2022 salsa matcha who knew and, you know, I wonder, sometimes I ask myself, like, you know, what is it with food? What is it with trends? What is it with, you know, conversations about food and trends and things that you like? And why is it all of a sudden something you like trending? It blows me away. Is it like uh, the power of suggestion? Is it somewhere, somehow you read something, you heard something, you know, some chefs, you've tasted something, you pushed it, you loved it that much, that many more places are willing to serve things like this? Maybe all of the above. But the fact is that food trends and an instinctive love of tasting and trying new things is what will make the trend. So here's the question for all you chefs and restaurateurs out there. Are you ready to get something trending, something that you believe is worth pushing out to the rest of the world for them to absolutely adore and love it as much as you? I'd have to say yes. And I'd have to say, if you're cooking, if you're pushing your restaurant, if you are inspiring your waiters and waitresses, your service staff, I think you got it. And it's about honing your skills and your understanding of textures, flavors, trends, and the world. I ordered some Aleppo peppers the other day. And they arrived, and I was like, okay, Aleppo peppers. And they are spectacular. You know, like the Espelette, e elegant and beautiful on the plate, but a different flavor. Something that, and I'm an, I'd have to say I'm an expert chili eater, okay? A kind of chili pepper that I had never tasted before, the Aleppo pepper. Yeah, loving it. And that's the world we live in today. 
you need to understand the world to to truly understand what will trend and what textures you're looking for and what flavors you want to emulate ultimately on your menu in your restaurant how you want to present these things to your guests how you want your staff to share that that excitement for new things these are the things my friends that drive me these are the things that allow me to continue after some like should i really even say it i'm 35 40 years of cooking this is what still keeps me motivated and that fire alive in me and it's wonderful i gotta admit whenever i I'd have to say that the, these 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 waiters tonight they inspired me, you know, because they made me feel they they obviously brought a lot of great memories back, but they made me feel like we've done something, we did something exciting, we really did something exciting, and we did it in Puerto Rico. I had a bunch of restaurants in Puerto Rico and a lot of staff. That's why, you know, Orlando being like you know the the absolute sister city to San Juan, you know, and certainly. The hub of Puerto Ricanionismo ism in the United States, if you ask me. At one point, it was New York, and now it's Orlando. And it's so good to run into people that worked with me in Puerto Rico because they remind me of that magic we did. That, that, in, that, that wonderful dining scene in San Juan that allowed me to truly push flavors and feed so many people and inspire so many cooks and so many waiters to be excellent, to push it, to inspire, and to be happy. And in the end, that's all we're looking for. Just want to inspire people, you want to make people happy, and you want to continue to brew that fire inside you. So, once again, we're coming to an end here of, uh, of this podcast, but I want to let everyone know out there Especially all my friends in Ireland, by the way. We got a notification from Ireland that we have a lot of listeners in Ireland, the Green Isle Eye. So lots of love to all of you. Lots of love to everyone out there. Keep listening. And remember, survival of the fittest is the soup du jour. We'll see you all very soon. Take care. <laughs>